Hey guys, Chef Jojo with ECO, and on this episode of Shift Drink, we're going to talk about what does it take to grow to that next level in the kitchen? How do you really get to become a chef? As always, we're going to discuss this topic over a Shift Drink. That's really good. Um, tonight's shift drink is Liquid Inferno Indian Pale Ale from Aero Lodge. It's a uh, Covina, it's brewed in Covina, which is in California, just north of here. Um, I've tasted quite a few of their beers, and this one is really, really good. So, training. That's what it is. You know, I often get asked... What does it take to become a chef? Or what does it take for you to get to that next level? And I, I often get an opportunity, well not often, I, I get an opportunity every now and again to talk to a group of students at the Culinary Lab in Orange County. It's in Tustin. It's a great program. They do a good job in training their students. And I'm really proud that I get the chance to try to influence that next generation as much as possible. One of the toughest questions is, what do I need to do to get to become a chef? And that's such a, such a loaded question because there's so much to it. It's not an easy business. It requires a lot of things. But let's just try to break it down a little bit. The first and foremost, like right off the bat, is that you have to train yourself. Now, I could probably go into an episode, and I might, where it's school versus no school, where you went to culinary school and you didn't. But really, let's just step that, let's sweep that to the side for the moment, because it really doesn't matter for this subject, because it's such a broad one. You want to become a chef? Well, you're going to have to train to become a chef. And how do you train to become a chef? You start off working in a restaurant and you push yourself a little bit. You know, it's interesting because like when I, I, I always go back and there's so many of you guys that watch this. This is not, this channel has been created not for me to show you how to make a flambe. I'm, I don't think that we'll do that. I think what I had the hardest time with was not just the tech, it wasn't the technique, it was like all of the rest. Like, how do you get to the next level? What do you do? How to, ah, it was just such a, a whirlwind of not knowing who I was, not knowing my style yet, not really having any type of idea of what I was going to do. I just knew that I loved to cook and I wanted to be the best chef out there. And if that kind of strikes a chord with you, this is what I can tell you that helped me get to that next level. Um, get to the level that you're so far separated from the food, sometimes you um, wish that you were still just a line cook. You were like, man, that was just such a beautiful time. Here's what I did. I constantly tried to learn. It was a, back then, it was really hard to get information. I, I ordered El Bulli's cookbook in Spanish because I couldn't find an English version of it. Then translated it to English so I could figure out how to make um, the juice caviars. Back then we called it the caviar or juice caviar. Now they call it spherification and you know you can watch a hundred different videos on just how to do that technique and how it worked. Hell you got people doing it at home now. Like you can order a kit online. I drove to a medical facility that had these uh, food, you know, FDA approved chemicals. And they're like, what do you need it for? Like they had no idea what I was doing. And it's because I was like, hey, does anybody have sodium bicarbonate or whatever it was? I mean, I think that's baking soda, but it was really not that easy. But now if you wanted to learn a technique, all you could do is just Google it, you know, use the YouTube to your advantage and say, um, how do I, and enter it. I think what I should probably do is take it back to the basics because the one thing that we all have in common is that we have to know how to use a knife. And I, I still remember what it was like when I put the knife in my hand for the first time and it felt really, really awkward. It was, it was a large chef knife. It came in our knife kit and you know, it didn't feel like, it felt like I was going to cut my finger off any second. It was just sharp 
and big and just awkward. And I grew up in a kitchen in the South where most of the people in the kitchen were like my grandmother and my aunts and stuff like that. And they used small little knives, like paring knives, and they cut everything with like a paring knife. And then I'm in school and I want to be a chef and now I'm holding a, a 10 inch or 12 inch chef knife and God, I must have cut myself so much. I remember always having a Band-Aid, you know? And my first knife skills class with, was, was with uh, Chef Dean Nograd. He was a guy that wrote the curriculum for Johnson & Wales and he put on this special class and I was very lucky to be in it. And he's like, you hold a knife like this and you hold it like a hammer and this is how you do it. You'll never get a problem. And uh, So I was like, okay, I'll hold it like he says. But man, I was completely a fish out of water. And I, I felt really scared putting the knife against my knuckle because I felt like I would lap off, just like totally cut off a fingernail. And I have before. I've cut off, you know, I've cut myself trying to learn. That's part of the process. That's that, if you can just take yourself back to when it was awkward holding a knife, then I think you could capture what it takes to become a chef. You have to push through that. You have to go, okay, what do I know? What do I don't, what don't I know? And how am I going to learn it? It's, it's not easy to be in our business. And there's not... There's some people that are really, really good at what they do, and they make it seem easy. You know, like, I have Jacques Pepin's Techniques book on my cutting board for a reason. I remember going to the library and watching him, like, debone a chicken, and I watched it over and over again, and I could, I still, to this day, I'm, I'm close. I'm close to making that process look easy. But, man, he was, he made it look like... It was flawless. I, I, he's one of my favorites because his techniques are so strong. And, he's, and he's, he's always stayed true to what the techniques are. And I think that's the foundation of what you have to understand. Because for, all, for everything that we do, we really just cook food. And as glamorous as people want to make it, and as, you know, as many ch TV shows and channels want to do it, that's fine. But we really take a knife and utensils and we chop up product and we add heat or we freeze it and we sell it. That's what we do. And, but for a lot of us, that means the world. That's everything. And you have to say, okay, now I'm in the industry, I've made it, and I'm working in a restaurant... And you got to go, okay, what am I good at? What am I not good at? About last week, I posted the shift drink, and it's, it stemmed from a question I got from Chef Brian on Snapchat. It was about struggling with the grill and how difficult that station was. And I was like, man, I got thrown off that grill so many different times. It was a really hard station. And there was a comment by, um, let me read it just so I don't mess it up. Lasix Van Berg. Now, this... Man, you make the best comments on YouTube, on the videos. They're very well thought out. They're very well written. I wish I could write as well as you. And you know what he said? He's like, you know, he struggled with the grill. And how he got good at it is he he watched other people and how they danced on that station. And then he did a AAR is what he called it, but it was an after action report. I kind of do the same thing on a lot of my events or a lot of different things that we try to execute. I call it a murder board. It's a little bit more, you know, we do an autopsy on what happened, what went well, what did not go well, and we try to re-examine that. So you want to learn something, you want to get better, you're going to have to work on your technique. If you don't understand the technique, watch YouTube, get Google, ask somebody. Ask somebody how they do it that way and learn from them. Don't bring your ego to the table. Bring, bring an open mind to the table and say, hey, you're really good at cleaning fish. Could you show me how you clean that fish? Um, and the world will kind of open up to you. We like to help others inside this industry to a certain extent. There's some of us that want to hoard it, but just ask the next person next to him. And you know what he said? He's like, I do these reports and I grade myself after the shift. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? And then I try to improve it for the next shift. You know, what we do is hard. It takes a lot of hours, a lot of concentration, and it, 
it can be really demanding. Not a lot of people understand how, how good we feel when we're working in that kitchen. It's, I've felt like a fish out of water in so many different situations. And when I finally started working in the kitchen, it was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I didn't have a lot of skill and I had to work really hard to get where I am now. And you know, I just kept failing and trying it over and over again. And I heard a person say, you fail your way to success as long as you don't quit. And I was like, okay, well, I can do that. I've been doing it for a while. Try to put yourself in a position where you understand what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are and just work on both at the same time. When you've had a long day and you, you're wrapping up in the kitchen, it can almost feel like you're crossing a finish line because it's been 15 hours, you've been stressed out, you almost missed prep, or did you do enough prep? Did the AM shift give you enough prep? And you pushed yourself through the rush and you wanted to make the best product you could and it took you everything you had to get it done. And then when you got it done, you felt really good. It's like you did something with yourself. You know, I love that feeling. And it's still to this day, I get it when the crew and everything does a good job. We cross the finish line together. And that can't be wrapped up in just one picture of an Instagram post or a, a social media, you know, hey, I'm going to snap a picture of a bunch of tickets stacked up. If you know, you know. But one plate, it doesn't wrap up all the hard work it took you to get to that spot. It was you pushing yourself and finding the moment where you're like, hey, you know what? I don't know how to do this. I'm going to teach myself. Or I'm going to find somebody that's going to teach me and I'm going to practice at it over and over. And if you can remember that, it's about how you feel. It's not about the likes. It's about how you feel when you go home. And I still feel really good about what I do when I drive home. Because uh, my crew and I and the team management team that I have push themselves to do the best that they can. And you know, I think that's why I love this industry so damn much is because it really just wants you to do a good job and results are results. It doesn't care about anything else. It's very black and white. And as long as you understand that you're not going to get there overnight, I think that's the that's the secret. I have so many different tangents that I'd love to go down on this subject and I hope that I was kind of like fluid with this. It's just something that I'm kind of passionate about. I want you guys to find the way to that chef level, but it doesn't happen overnight. Keep pushing yourself, keep trying to find what drives you. Um, as always, you know, you guys can follow us. If this is something, if you have a question that I didn't answer or something that sparked something with you, leave a comment. Send me a message. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat. You can always subscribe to us on YouTube where this is at. Hit the bell so you'll get notified when these videos go back up. And as always, I'm Chef Jojo, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.